divine truth frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session two. How does a spirit or a person no longer living on earth experience life? Yeah, well, it's very interesting because, you know, if we think of our life here on earth, the way we experience our life is through the physical form. So our physical form has been created by God specifically to enable us to experience the sensory apparatus through the sensory apparatus of our physical form, life itself. So we see things with our eyes, that they enter us. We hear things with our ears. We have a sense of touch. We have the sense of taste. We have the sense of smell. We also have other senses which we develop as well, which are all to do with our emotional part of ourselves. They are the senses of the spirit body. Mm -hmm. So our emotions are one of the senses that we also use to experience the world. We have certain emotional responses to certain events. So not only do we have physical responses to do with our sensory apparatus of our body, but we have emotional responses based on what happened at the time. Now, this is how we in the physical body experience the world. And a spirit experiences the world in exactly the same way with one exception, that they no longer have a physical body. And so they experience their world through the sensor, sensory apparatus of their spirit body. Mm -hmm. And the spirit body has a capacity for higher and more sensory apparatus. In other words, it is far more uh, developed in the sense for allowing us to experience things in, a, in an emotional perspective than the physical body is developed in such a way. So while it is possible for us to, to experience emotions really well here on Earth, if we are totally open to it, there's a tendency on Earth to shut all of that down and have a physical experience. But in the spirit world, that's not possible. It's mm -hmm. not possible to shut everything down emotionally. And uh, you, you, you will either react every single time to an emotion at some point. So for the majority of spirits, they're trying to deny an emotions constantly. And so they react in a lot of rage and they have all those kind of very intense, malicious emotions. For people who are trying to love, they experience love in a very beautiful, much more beautiful way than oftentimes they experience it on earth. Mm -hmm. So what happens is because this, there is that one level less of layer between the soul and the spirit body and the material body. So if we look at us here on earth, we have all the sensory stuff coming through our material body, which we are very focused on. We have a very strong focus generally here on earth to that body. Mm -hmm. We're not very conscious. Most of them, in fact, the majority of people on the planet are not conscious at all of their spirit body. And as a result, most of our sensory input comes through our physical form. When we die... That's not possible anymore. Mm -hmm. We are forced to have all of our sensory input through our spiritual form, our spirit body, which is a genetic structure similar to the physical body, but of, made of different material. And this spirit body now is the method by which we use to engage the universe around us. And we can engage the physical universe and we can engage now the spirit universes, the universe, the dimension we now exist in as well. We can engage any dimension below which we are now. So if mm -hmm. we are in the spirit body form, we can engage a physical and spirit dimensions. If we're just in the physical form, it's much more difficult for us to engage the spiritual dimensions because our focus is on the material. The reality, though, is that all of us on Earth have the ability to engage the soul dimensions mm -hmm. if we chose to live our life differently and if we chose to focus on what is inside of our soul to develop. But because the majority of us don't, we are very focused on the physical. Mm -hmm. so, so if we look at the average person on earth mm -hmm. who's focused on the physical, they're receiving all of this sens sensory information through their physical body. They're mm -hmm. receiving all this data, if you like, which then goes through into their spirit body's mind and into their soul in terms of an emotional experience. The soul stores all those emotional experiences and stores all the memories of all of that, of all of what's happened. And the spirit body has all of these sensory apparatus, which we could choose to develop, but most people don't. They're just focused on the physical. So now let's assume that the person doesn't have a physical body anymore. Mm -hmm. Now 
all of the apparatus of the spirit body comes into play much more strongly for the average person. And immediately, would you say? And immediately yeah. in many cases. Because they have not engaged these spirit senses before, they are often quite overwhelmed by those spirit senses. So they have still the sense of sight, hearing, yeah. touch, taste, smell. But in addition to these senses, they have a whole heap of other senses available to them which would have been available to them in the physical form still yeah. because it's immaterial where they live as to what's available to them. They just didn't develop them. So these are all undeveloped, raw senses yes. that are now a part of their existence. Well, they're the primary way they experience life. Now. They're the primary way they experience yep. life because they're so, not aware of the soul. They still haven't developed much of their soul. Yep. So they're focused now they're fo focused into what they're forced to focus on, which mm -hmm. is the development of their spirit form. So what kind of additional senses? You mentioned there's additional senses. What kind of additional senses do we have when we're just in our, from our spirit body? Say? Now, bear in mind that all of these senses are available to us even in the physical. Yes. They are just undeveloped because the majority of people don't believe in them or the majority of people don't accept that they're possible or the majority of people are even completely unaware. Mm -hmm. So all of the senses I'm going to list are all available in the physical, but the majority of people don't develop them. Yes. But when you become a spirit, you're forced into development of them very, very rapidly and usually quite instantly. In many cases, some of these senses come into play. One of the first senses that come into play are the ability to read thoughts. So in other words, any thought that is of a similar quality or nature of your own condition can be read in another person. So let's clarify what you mean by that statement. Mm -hmm. So um, when you refer to my condition, mm -hmm. my, con my development in love. So always my development in love is condition. So I c if, if I'm speaking to you and you have a similar development in love to me, mm -hmm. I could read your thoughts? You could read most of my thoughts. Uh -huh. If I had any thoughts that were higher than your inner condition of love, you would not be able to read them. Yep. But if I had all these thoughts that were lower than yours in a condition of love, you'd be able to read all of them. Uh -huh. right? You'd gotcha. know everything. Gotcha. So all of those very negative emotions that I might have and negative thoughts that I might have as negative desires that I might have, you will see every one of them. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. one of the gifts uh, of through this process, right? That anybody in a higher condition of love can read the thoughts of a person in a lower condition of love or the same condition. Mm -hmm. Now, what this means then is I don't have to listen to your words anymore. I can just read your thoughts. And sometimes I can even see that your thoughts are different to your words. <laughs> and then I start yep. to see the hypocrisy of the world and the hypocrisy of life and the hypocrisy of life on earth and all sorts of things came emotionally to me through that process. And these kind of emotions generally have a tendency to overwhelm me as well because I haven't developed myself emotionally. Mm -hmm. Emotional development is of the soul. And so because I've neglected the development of the soul, I'm getting bombarded with these emotions that I don't know what to do with. I don't know how to handle them, how to manage them. And so many of the times I handle them quite negatively. Mm -hmm. In other words, I get angry, resistive, resentful, mm -hmm. and all sorts of things will happen as a result of me not being able to cope with the flood of information that mm -hmm. is now available to me. However... I also have a huge amount of information now available to me that I never had before. And after a while, if I'm not careful, I can misuse it. So what kinds of information? Well, I know what you're thinking. Yeah. And, and for the majority of people, because they are self-oriented, self-motivated and selfish, and because they have a heap of addictions of their own that they would like meet, to meet, they only look at the thoughts you have that will meet their addictions. And they see the thought and they go, Oh, this person will meet my addiction, mm -hmm. you see? And so then they take actions to try to cause the person to meet their addictions. Sure. Which actually causes further damage to their own soul, unknowingly in most cases, but knowingly in some. But, uh, but because they're addicted to the process, they don't want to give it up. It's like a cigarette or a, a drink to them. You know, they, they've got to do it. They've got to do it. Yeah. And, uh, and so they're very, very more, much more strongly misled by their addictions as mm -hmm. a result. And they also become aware that uh, they have a lot more potential for getting into trouble. <laughs> In what other do you words, mean by that? Yeah. well, a person on earth, for example, if he was looking through the window at a woman get undressing in the bathroom, he'd be called a voyeur or a, 
what's another a word for them? Peeping Tom or something. Yeah. And generally, society would uh, probably, you know, condemn the person or have a problem with him, right? But in the spirit world, there are literally billions of peeping toms. They just, every woman who gets undressed, they just watch them get undressed and get some sexual feelings from the person getting undressed. And the reason why they do that is they can get away with it. They feel they're invisible. The person can't see them. The person's not even really conscious in many cases that they are there. And as a result, they get away with it. And because they get away with it, they then feel empowered to do it more. That is if they don't have a development in love, obviously. That's if they don't have yep. a development in love. If they had a development in love, they'd honour the woman and they'd say, well, she probably doesn't want me here watching her get undressed, so I shouldn't be here. Yep. And, and it, they'd leave, right? Yes. Um, but if they don't have a development in love, they will take actions that will further degrade their development. Mm. And so many spirits choose to take those okay. actions. In fact, most, the majority of people who pass choose to take those actions initially. Yeah. Mm. So you, what other senses might, might we have in our, well, do we have in our spirit form that are not very developed usually when we're in our physical form? Well, for example, uh, in our physical form, we're capable of telepathy. telepathy telepathy yes um, we are capable of doing that in our spirit form of course even to a large large degree so now we can read the thoughts of any person and yeah. and also transmit thoughts to them yeah. now the fact that we can transmit thoughts to them we start to realize that we can transmit thoughts to people and confuse them because mm -hmm. they can't see us mm -hmm. we can confuse them and make them think that they were their own thoughts mm -hmm. which is a deceiving process mm -hmm. right and that is a very a deceptive and dangerous thing that for our soul because our soul will degrade, but that's another choice that most spirits make when they pass. Mm -hmm. They start dropping thoughts into people's minds to get their addictions met. Yeah. They can also hear, uh, they, we, because they have the ability to go to places based on where they feel to go, they have the ability for instant um, travel. Travel, yeah. Um, to any location that their soul is in a condition to go to. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if their soul is in a hell-based condition, they can go to anywhere in the hells and they can go generally to most places here on earth. As a result of that, many choose to look at what's going on in a far greater detail and actually manipulate what's going on in a far greater detail mm -hmm. because they can go from one location to another location to another location. They can attach themselves to people and uh, uh, because of this, they can see the addictions in people and they can connect to the addictions in people and feed off of their addictions through the emotion. They start to realise that they also have another ability and this, this is the ability to feel through another person. So they can feel the emotions of another person and if their emotions have a codependency to that emotion or have a sympathetic attraction to that emotion, they realise that they can induce other people to do things and then share in the feeling. Mm -hmm. So they can induce another person to have sex and then share in the sexual feeling. They can induce another person to drink alcohol and share the feeling of being drunk. So they would induce them through this idea of suggestion that you were talking about earlier. The but also through suggestion. the manipulation of the suppression of emotions in the person who's alive. Yes. So they manipulate the emotions of the person who's alive so the person who's alive feels attracted to take the action that they take that will feed the addiction of the spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and so the spirit does this and does this frequently with a lot of different issues. So this is why a lot of people on earth find it very difficult to give up certain negative behaviour yeah. because they're getting heavily influenced through their addictions by spirit, people who are spirits. But this is another way in which a spirit can... Uh, like It's another sense that the spirit can feel. There's other senses they have too. They have, uh, besides the ability to travel instantly, you, you can see there is also the mind of the spirit body is far more capable intellectually than the brain of the physical body. Mm -hmm. In other words, and, and, and in our future, we can make the two the same, but unfortunately for the majority of people, because they shut down the barrier between the spirit body and material body quite heavily, they don't have the intellectual capacity they'd have when they passed. But after they passed, they usually have a higher intellectual capacity because their brain has the ability to think more rapidly and with much greater, so, so with much greater speed and much greater clarity. Mm -hmm. It's still driven by their negative emotions. So if their evil desire is to do something, 
they'll have a far greater capacity to find out how to satisfy their evil desire than they would if they were living on earth. Sure. So, so unfortunately, it has many negative connotations for most who pass. But there is the capacity to think more clearly and to think more logically. And there's the capacity to also observe the spirit body for the first time. So they can see the spirit body of every being. Now, that could be used positively or negatively as well. Mm -hmm. If I see your spirit body and notice it has certain injuries in certain places and know that a certain addiction is located in those locations, I can feed off of those addictions if I choose to. Or I can choose to help you. Depends on my motivation, whether I'm motivated by love or not. So in the end, it gets back down to we have all of these additional capacities and we're still motivated usually by the same motivations. So if then our, that we had when that we, we were had on before Earth. we passed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So so if I am still motivated by evil tendencies or my addictions, once I pass, I will continue to be motivated by my evil tendencies or addictions, but I will have an additional capacity to satisfy them. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is going to draw me even into even more negative behaviour. If I'm motivated by love when I'm in my physical form and I pass, I have additional capacities to be motivated by love in a more positive benefit. To express that love. To express that to, love. Yes, yeah. And so I am going to have a stronger tendency to be drawn into loving, love-based behaviour in an even more passionate way mm -hmm. as a result mm -hmm. of my passing. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter what I believe. What matters is what I'm addicted to, what my emotional beliefs are. What, what, what my driving what force is. What my drive, is. Is, yeah, drive yeah. is, what my motivations are. That's yeah. what matters. And that's why in the first century I talked to people over and over again about their motivations, mm -hmm. about whether their motivations were in harmony with love or out of harmony with love. Because if your emotion, emotions are in harmony and motivations are in harmony with evil desires or with meeting your own addictions... You are going to find life, no matter what you believe. You can be a Christian, a Muslim, or you can be a person who's listened to divine truth for 20 years on earth. It doesn't matter. Once you pass, you'll be drawn into those addictions mm -hmm. and you'll be drawn into them with such ferocity that it's going to be very, very difficult for you to overcome them, in, in a, in a, particularly in the first instance. Mm -hmm. If on earth you've worked through a lot of your addictions and you have as your driving motivation the motivation of love, then when you pass into the spirit world, you will find it very easy to be motivated more fully in love. Mm. And as a result, you, you will have a mind much more clarity, you have emotions with much more clarity, you will have uh, the ability to read thoughts and feelings of other people, but you'll do it in harmony with love. And as a result of that, every action you take will be in more harmony with love than you could manage while you're on earth. Mm. And that's why the development in love is so important. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I want to recap because you said a lot of things in that answer. Sure, sure. <laughs> so basically you said initially, or well, first off, um, when we lose our physical body, we begin to experience life primarily through our spirit body. Correct. And you said that we could develop um, an experience or heighten our experience while we're in our physical body by developing our awareness of our spirit senses because we have them even while we are on earth as of well. Of course, we still yeah. have both bodies. We're, our soul is connected to two bodies and they're all present yep. at the same time. So we have the ability to develop all things. All of those things. But typically what happens is when we're in the physical body, the physical senses the, of this physical body are our primary interface. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we lose the physical body, we suddenly gain an awareness of these other senses. Is that right? Well, that are, yeah, we have the same senses we had uh, in a physical body, in the spirit body, yep. but with some awareness of some more senses that we weren't aware of before, that we've always had the potential of developing, mm -hmm. but we just weren't aware of them before. But now we become aware of them. Got you. Mm. Now, the senses that you listed, in mm. addition to our five primary senses mm. that we have in our physical body, we mm. still retain them in mm. our spirit body. Yes. But and we... in fact, they become more sensitive. We right. can see further. We can see a, a larger spectrum of light, for example, with mm -hmm. our eyesight. So our eyesight's not li limited to what we call on Earth the visible spectrum. Mm -hmm. it's, it, we can go into the ultraviolet and into the infrared. So we can see a lot more mm -hmm. as a result of that. And Same applies equally to our hearing. And, and touch. And touch. And our touch is more sensitive. Yes. Just the briefest of touches can do all sorts of things to our body in different, uh, yeah. depending on what So we're not all um, 
um, um, filmy and see-through and no. non-substance. There's and a lot fact, of substance. In fact, two spirits see each other's bodies as a solid. Mm -hmm. So when they hug each other, it's, they, a real... it's a real solid that they're hugging. That's, yes. that they, that because they're in the same dimension, they see each other's body as a solid. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But the senses in addition, that we, so in addition to our heightened five senses, mm -hmm. you've mentioned some others. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that the abil telepathic abilities, mm -hmm. the ability to, to read, read and transmit and thoughts, transmit thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, an increased intellectual capacity, yes. clarity and functioning. Yes, because um, we're now focused on the, the, the brain of the spirit body rather than the brain of the material of body. Of the material body, yeah. Yep. The ability to travel. Quickly ability, and wherever we want to go. Yes, yep. not instantly, but it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Like it is, in terms of our term here on Earth, instant. But but there is there is a uh, depending on different locations, there is a different ability. So yep. in the lowest of the spheres, there is still the ability to move back and forth. Okay, mm -hmm. um, that we become more emotional or more in touch with our emotions. Is that um, no? Or more driven. We become more emotionally centric but not necessarily in touch with our real emotions gotcha. because we could be in denial and when we're in denial we will experience more of our rageful and other fear-based emotions. So, so in other words, if we have a lot of fear on earth that we've suppressed, when we hit the spirit world we'll find the fear will be so intense that we won't be able to avoid it. Mm -hmm. If we have a lot of rage on earth that's really intense but we suppress it, when we get the spirit world we're not going to be able to suppress that rage. And, and so there's a less of a capacity to suppress emotion. Correct. My goodness, sometimes I you, feel like... You will still want to suppress it, and so this is where you use your will. So many spirits use their will intensely to suppress their rage, but they still have huge amounts of rage, for example, but yeah. they have to use their will. The majority of them are not able to do it. And so if they have rage, by the time they hit the spirit world, they'll be enraged, and that's the way it is. Got you. Yeah. You also mentioned some other things, and it sounded pretty gloomy there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The... The way most spirits um, behave after pass uh, after they lose their physical bodies, you said they often realise that they can influence others, mm -hmm. that they can feel things through others, mm -hmm. and that they have the advantage that they're invisible to people who still have a physical body, or the majority of people who have a physical body. Exactly. And so, and you... these cause psychological adjustments in their mind to go, oh, okay, I'm no longer limited by physical laws. I'm no lim longer limited by the law of the land. If I feel like murdering someone, I can try to have them murder them. Nobody's going to stop me because mm -hmm. nobody, nobody can, can see, see me, me. And half of the people don't even believe I exist anymore. Exactly. Yeah. And so they will attempt. Yeah. They will attempt what they might not have attempted when they were on earth. And so this sounds very dark. It sounds like most people, when they pass, <laughs> well, it do a lot of sort of dark damage. things, yes, damage. Yes, yep. certainly. In, f in fact, in the first 10 to 20 years of a person's passing, they usually do more damage in that time than they do their whole life on earth. Wow. Um, when, they're in, when they're using their will on earth already in a condition that's out of harmony with love. And that's the key that's final the key. point, isn't it, that you made, that it all depends on how we, what the motivation is. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So if we have a good motivation on earth that's driven by loving desires, what happens when we hit the spirit world is we have this beautiful ability to express all of our loving desires. We live in beautiful locations as a result. Mm. The locations are far beyond anything a person can imagine here on earth, even in the second dimension. Mm -hmm. They are far beyond anything that a person can imagine here on earth as the most beautiful location. And the people, uh, you're surrounded by people who all have the same loving desires. That's, that's the wonder of it all that makes it even better because you're not surrounded by dark and gloomy people, you're surrounded by people who have the same loving desires as yourself and it's just a wonderful experience. Mm. And so there are so many potential for wonderful experience, potentials, but unfortunately the majority of people on earth don't initially experience that. Mm -hmm. What they initially experience is the pain and suffering of taking some further actions out of harmony with love, coming to awareness of what's going on as a result. They get to a point where they're they degrade their love so much that they become ashamed of their own degradation. Mm -hmm. And once they become ashamed of their own degradation, they stop. Mm. And once they stop, then they can be taught. Mm. That, that's the time when they and start And what taught. about someone uh, listening who says, well, look, you know, I know I'm not perfect and I know sometimes I'm selfish and I know... Um, but I feel like I do want 
some loving things for my kids or, or whatever. Um, are most of us kidding ourselves? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, most of us are kidding ourselves. Yeah. The reality is if you just want loving things for your children and not for every child on earth, then you're kidding yourself, to be honest. It's a selfish motivation. If you're willing to just give to your child and help your child, but you're not willing to give another child, because just and if you're only giving to your child because they're your child, mm -hmm. then it's a selfish motivation. Mm. And unfortunately, you'll find out that once you pass, if you don't find out before then... So, no, your motivation is going to have to be very pure in order to get to even the second dimension of the spirit world. And my suggestion to people is to, to purify their motivations because every motivation in harmony with love is going to be rewarded through this process of what happens after you pass. Every motivation that's out of harmony with love, you are going to find very difficult to correct after you pass. Mm -hmm. You're far better off taking actions right now and that always applies no matter you're, whether you're a spirit or a person on earth, take actions right now to fix the unloving motivations because it's the unloving motivations that are going to cause your pain and suffering. Mm. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I think from this answer we can see that, that from what, what I find talking to most people is they believe when they pass, if they have any spiritual beliefs of what happens when they pass, they always believe they're going to be in a better state. Mm. And, and, and honestly... The majority of them end up in a far worse state than they can imagine. Because the paint, the picture you've painted is, is if we have any little hole, any little weakness, any, because we have these heightened senses, our temptation is going to be to satisfy our selfish desires or our avoidance of our pain before mm -hmm. we take the noble choice. That's correct. Because it's easier. Yes. And there's less feedback in terms of other people. When you say it's easier, it's easier... Our addiction's already present, and that's what makes it easier. Mm. If our addiction wasn't there, it wouldn't be easy at all to do it. Yes. You know, it's like a, strike trying to force a non-smoker to smoke. You know, you can't force no. a non-smoker to smoke once he's decided he never wants to smoke. You know, yes. that's it. Yes. <laughs> you can yes. force it down, you know, force it on him or whatever, but he's not going to do it. No. It's the same as trying to force a person who, you know, to become a drunkard. Mm -hmm. If a person already has made a decision in the heart never to do it, that you, you can't force them, you mm. can't change their mind. No matter what happens, you, you can't force them to make, make a worse choice. Whereas if you're a drunk who's broke on earth, when you pass, there's no money anymore. So you could Yeah, potentially you just connect make... to one other person on earth, another person on earth, another person on earth, and you might serially go from person to person to person, connecting to all these different people, just forcing them to have a drink and trying to have them get it. Once they start, trying to have as many drinks as possible... Um, so that you can absorb the feeling of being drunk. Yep. And there are many, many spirits in the spirit world who do that. And there are many spirits who do that with sex as well, yeah. who just go from one person to another person to another person, setting up liaisons, trying to have and share in the sexual experiences. And a lot of the people on earth have such a thing, a he-man thing or, or, you know, a woman, a controlled woman type of thing about it. Oh, aren't I good? You know, I can set up all these kind of things. And that just connects with the spirit and, and oftentimes... These people are heavily, heavily manipulated. There's a lot of spiritual movements on the planet which are sexually oriented that are totally controlled by very, very dark spirits who are all sexually oriented as a mm. result. And, uh, and, you know, a lot of the so-called cults and everything that exist on the planet are heavily motivated by dark, evil spirits who drive people into certain types of behaviours, pedophilia and also into uh, sexual, you know, open sexual relationships and sexual liaisons. Uh, also drugs, a lot of drug taking on earth is motivated by spirits who, who don't any longer have the availability of those drugs in mm. the spirit world. Mm. So there, are, there is a lot of very, very negative behaviour occurring on earth as a result of the addictions of the people on earth mixed with the desires of the spirits. Mm. Mm. Now, while all that might sound pretty negative, my feelings are is that it could be very, very different, but it depends on our choices. Mm. So, so we've only got ourselves to blame if it sounds <laughs> negative. And that's the thing we need to remember. And, and it, there's such a tendency, isn't there, um, to, to avoid facing the, the negative reality of what exists. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we want to tell, I know, you know, even for myself... We want to tell ourselves the story of how great we are and how developed we are when our actual life is reflecting other things. Exactly. And, and we feel like, oh, it's all negative and a downer to look at those negative things. But in fact, while we deny them and mm -hmm. live in our pretty denial land, 
so cool. <laughs> it's not that really that pretty, but it's a bit, you know, yeah, we yeah. ignore a lot of things. Then we can never hope to change those no. things. And actually, from what you're saying, we give spirits a lot more power in our lives. And too, when far we too pass, much power. yeah. Far too much power. If, if we all understood how to use our own will, we would not be giving these spirits any power, actually. Mm. The reality is most of us have a difficulty understanding the usage of our own will. And as a result of that, we often choose to do things that are out of harmony with love. And as a result of that, we then attract a whole group of other people who have passed who want to help us mm. uh, degrade our own condition, actually. Mm. And it's sad, but it is a result of our own choice and we need to see it as such. And the fact that we have different choices we can make. Totally different yeah. choices. The reality is if you're desiring to be loving, you can be surrounded by beautiful spirits all the time who just have your, you know, your loving condition in their heart, wanting to help you improve it. They will help you develop your life and help you develop a sense of yourself and help you develop a sense of your relationship with God, your relationship with the environment. And as a result of that, you'll have a very good life on earth, not, mm -hmm. just, not just in the spirit world, but also on earth. So we have so much potential for good, and God's, of course, created that through the use of our will. But unfortunately, we also have a lot of potential for bad yeah. that is also created through the exercise of our will. And from what you're saying about all these new senses that we get more in touch with as we become a spirit mm. alone, mm. and not just a physical body with a spirit body, but just a spirit body yes. if we've already cultivated those beautiful loving desires and motivations then we're going to have a great time we can go anywhere we can we have increased increased mental clarity so we're going increased to understand awareness. things we can help people on earth who have the same kind of motivations Correct. and in the we, spirit world because yeah. there's many people yeah. in the spirit world who have similar motivations or need assistance yeah so there's many people in the hills of the spirit world who are crying out for help mm -hmm. they they reach that point of personal degradation where they no longer want to go beyond it mm -hmm. and once they reach that point they are asking for assistance and there's you know we can be involved there's there's whole groups of very large groups of spirits helping every one of those people progress out of that condition mm -hmm. so there's so many good things available to us but at the same time so many negative things depending on the use of our will yeah yeah thank you mm.